Hi, welcome back. Now, if you've watched our first video, you've seen how to create the pocket and just stay stitch it to your basic bunny pouch shape. And you saw that I drew the ear templates onto folded right sides together folded fabric. And then all I've done is I've just used some leftover scraps of wadding that were on here to pin behind the ear shapes. And then without cutting the fabric, I'm going to just sew on that pencil line to make each ear. There you go. Now, if you cut across the bottom of the ears, and then I am just going to use pinking shears to cut the curve. And this is a nice thing about having a drawn line to sew to and then cutting your seam allowance afterwards because you don't have to be quite so precise. What I am just going to do though is snip away some of that excess wadding especially around by the base of the ear because this is probably the trickiest bit and that's turning these ears inside out through that very small hole in the bottom. Which is why a pair of hemostats is really handy. You can open them slightly, grab the top end of the fabric, and then you should be able to just simply pull it out relatively easily. That's why it's always worth using a decent quality of cotton because if you use something very thin and, and something with a bit of a dodgy weave on it you might find that you actually tear your fabric but no he's come out quite nicely so there's one ear just do the same with the other one you can also do this with a piping turner actually you can hook it into the fabric but uh, these hemostats because they grip so well, they are really handy. If you know someone that does fishing on a regular basis, you'll probably find that they might have a, I was going to say a spare pair that they'd let you have. It's unlikely because they're so handy, but they'll be able to tell you where you can buy some. So you've got your ears, and what you need to do now is put them on the top of your head so that they stick out the back. But you don't want to put them on like that because you need to match up your raw edges. So you need to actually cross them over inside your bunny's head. And I'm just going to very quickly tack them in place almost. So they don't shift in a minute. Also, doing that is a very good way of checking that you've actually got the position okay. Yep, they come out nicely like that. So tack them back in. Take your lining fabric that you had previously and pin it in place over the top of everything. And you're best to just check things like curves and corners. Make sure you don't accidentally pin those ears in at the same time. 
these bits inside. You don't want to get them caught. Down his back and then over the pocket bit. And I'm going to leave a gap in the lower edge about four or five centimetres wide for turning out. So we'll start at that pin. And lock your stitches in. And then just sew around that line with a good 5 mil seam allowance. And that way all your layers of fabric should be caught up in this one seam. And then what I'm going to do is where those ears are, I've just gone back over them for extra security. I'm also just going to put the pressure back on my foot because that's slipping somewhat. Round to the curve of his nose. Just back down to the bottom. Lock your stitches off. Now, what I am just going to do is just trim up that excess fabric there. And I'm just going to clip under his chin and a couple of times at the back of his neck. I'm going to cheat with my glue stick and just fold back the edge of the turning hole on my lining fabric. And that's for two reasons. That's to stop it fraying when you turn something inside out. But it's also to give you a definite sewing line because in a minute, we're gonna to have to close up that gap. So now, hopefully, what you should be able to do is pop your fingers inside your rabbit. Not something I thought I'd ever say. Grab his ears. and pull him out. If you turn your rabbit inside out and you find that your pocket is missing and it's on the back, it is just a very simple case of popping the pocket back out again. Because I've done projects with pockets like this before and then thought, what on earth have I done? How have I done this so wrong? And it is just human error. As most of my demos, or most of the mistakes on my demos are. Let's just use a knitting needle to get out all these curves and corners. And you would give this a good press. And then you simply pin that bottom edge to that. And you would slip stitch the bottom just to close that gap up. So there you go. Very, very easy bunny pouch. Very cute bunny pouch, even if I do say so myself. The other thing that you could do, I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't take the template, enlarge it and actually turn it into something like a reading pillow. So you've got it as a book pouch as well. And it's, you know, something nice to cuddle up to. 
So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I hope that's made things abundantly clear as to how you can put pockets on things. And uh, till the very next time, thank you very much for watching. Keep safe and we'll see you soon. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.